What's going on YouTube? BustTH here and we're back for another PC upgrade log. Today we're going to be doing a little cooling upgrade and it's time to get some better performance out of my overclock. Now most of these parts you've seen here have been covered by a bunch of different YouTubers so I'll just go over them briefly to show you what I've got. So I picked up the Corsair H100i which is a fairly good closed loop water cooled CPU cooler. That's a mouthful. I also only paid 90 bucks for this which makes it even more appealing to me. <laughs> it does have compatibility for AMD and Intel CPUs which comes with different brackets in the box. The install was fairly easy although I had to bend my motherboard tray back a bit to fit some of the screws but other than that it went through buttery smooth. The route mounting was also done pretty easily. For the h 100 i was installing I actually didn't switch out the pre-applied heatsink after reading some reports online that the performance of the stock one is actually better than your Arctic Silver 5 and all this other stuff like that. Just a quick tip for anyone who hasn't done this, when replacing a CPU cooler, make sure you get some isopropyl alcohol just to make sure everything comes off the chip clean so when you go to reinstall you got nothing left over before. And the pump itself is actually very quiet, it doesn't really emit any noise coming at all when it's running full blast. Now I also picked up four Corsair SP120 fans for the main fact because of static pressure. Um, if you don't know what static pressure is, just hit it up in YouTube, search static pressure fans. A bunch of other people can explain it way better than I can. Uh, the other thing I got it for was the cosmetics, because I love the way those red rings look. Reminds me of my Xbox 360. Haha, <laughs> fuck that. But yeah, so cosmetically they look good, and I got all four fans for around 45 bucks. Now, some of you are thinking, why would I do this? The air cooler that I was in there was actually pretty good before. Well, no it wasn't. When rendering videos, my CPU was getting into the high 70s, and when running a Prime 95 test for 20 minutes, I actually hit the 80s. So that's a no-go for me. Even when playing light CPU intensive games like Counter-Strike, my CPU would get into the high 60s, low 70s, and for just under 150 bucks, I fixed that problem. And now I'm staying in the chill temps between 25 degrees and 30 degrees Celsius at idle, and I haven't even touched 65 degrees Celsius when rendering, or even doing a Prime 95 test for an hour. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and make sure you're subscribed so you can be notified when the video comes up and when my GPU finds a new friend. So thanks for watching, guys, and have a good one.